Hello. Okay, so welcome to episode two of season two in Julie's Unknown Podcast. So as promised from episode one, I decided I was going to do this episode all on the 12 houses of astrology so that when you do listen to any time I talk about anything astrology, whether it's like new moon, full moon, or, you know, any planets that are going into retrograde or going direct, you can kind of come back to this episode or even take notes while you're listening to it, like getting your chart out and really going through the whole process to seeing like, how does this, you know, affect you? Because obviously like with full moons and new moons, they go through certain zodiac signs and so do the planets. And although we may see themes of said zodiac sign, it will still look differently depending on your birth chart and where you were born and where does that planet transit or that that moon is transiting under what house so this is like a really good way to get started in astrology and so I first I want to say that I usually get my charts from a website either astro-seek.com or I have this app called Time Nomad. I'm going to put this in the show notes so you can like kind of go. And basically, I use whole houses, tropical. So that is what I use. Obviously, if you are um, on the other side of the world and you're listening to it, Australia and whatnot, it's very possible that you might use side reel. Um, and then some people don't use whole houses. They use split, like, you know, kind of like the other one. Uh, for me, whole houses resonate the most per my chart. If you find the other one resonates better for you, then go with that. I, I believe that is something that intuitively you know which one feels more right for you. And so when you look at your chart, it's going to look like a wheel. And basically, each there's going to be each section that has a number. So it's a numbers 1 to, to 12. And that that is the house that is. And so whatever planets are residing in there, those are themes um, that you will see in that house. So you can even like listen to this and like kind of get to know a little bit more your birth chart and play around with it as well. So we're going to start right away with the first house kind of get we're going to go in there. So first house uh, is ruled by Aries. So this is very much. The beginnings Aries is the first as I said in the previous episode Aries is the first zodiac sign and so you can think of new beginnings in this first house so anything that transits around this or whatever planets you already have that you can think of it kind of like kind of it's always like new things getting started in the first house you will also find that that is where your rising sign is so your rising sign is basically your first house it's your house of self is first impressions is your identity is how you present yourself to the world uh your appearances and how you approach life so whatever your rising sign is it will always be in the first house no matter what Now we're going to go into the second house. So the second house is ruled by Taurus. And this house is has everything to do about material uh, objects, like your material things, money, income, uh, work ethic, your habits at work and how you present yourself at work, uh, your daily routines, your daily routines at work and what does that look like. And so let's say uh, Mercury is transiting under your second house, then you might have things pop up in that that challenges you in terms of like money, or there might be some things that you are being challenged around your work habits, like how, what are your day to day routines at work? And how do you navigate that? And is there something that you need to shift or let go or work on get better at? And so that is an example of how like a retrograde can come in in transiting through one of your houses and how it can like show up for you. Um, this is also, it can show up in terms of like money, like what money beliefs do you have and how do you, what do you believe about money? And, uh, you know, maybe certain things might happen externally, you might lose money, you might gain a lot of money during these retrogrades. And maybe because it's there to show you something around money and how 
what your relationship is with money. And so that is another way it can show up for you. Uh, for those, um, ignore that, ignore that. Sorry about that. Okay, so now we're going to dive into the third house. The third house is uh, ruled by Gemini. So this house is all about communication, technology, siblings. So a lot of those kind of things, social activity as well. And so if there is like, let's say, you know, a full moon, full moons are all about usually endings, closures, depending on what, which zodiac sign the full moon is in, but mostly like, you know, their full moon's all about letting go. And new moons are all about bringing in the new. So like, let's say you have a full moon in, you know, that is transiting through your third house in Gemini, then you might see themes either around communication, like how can you improve your communication? How can you let go of certain ways you used to communicate and like, you know, kind of release that? Or maybe there is something to let go of around siblings or technology. Uh, sometimes like, you know, someone's phone will break uh, during full moon and it was like transiting through their third house and there you go like that is like a way of like you know basically saying Kate let go of that phone time to get yourself a new one then after this we got the fourth house fourth house is ruled by cancer so fourth house is all about the home the family life um the your parents your mom your dad um and so themes that you might find yourself in this, like if there's any transits that's happening, whether it's a retrograde or a full moon, you can, you will, if it's navigating through your fourth house, you would either be making adjustments to your home life, whether it's moving or changing decor or completely revamping it. Um, or there could be some like things happening, either conflict or resolutions with your mom or dad. So those are, or just like family themes. So, so those are some of the stuff that you would find if, if anything is transiting over that fourth house. After this, we will go to the fifth house. Fifth house is ruled by Leo. So fifth house is all about romance, pleasure, play, childlike. It's fun, playful, um, also associated with fertility as well. And so when you have certain things transiting over this house, you will see themes of like, maybe you are meant to play more. Maybe that is something you're being guided to. Also, I do find, you know, in our life from day to day, we tend to take things a little too seriously and just focus so much on work and paying bills and doing the tasks we need to do that we forget to play. So sometimes, you know, certain transits or full moons or new moons will go through this house to remind us that, hey, go outside, have fun. Uh, maybe there might be also certain things around pleasure, like how, you know, do you, how do you please yourself? How do you, how would you like to be pleased? How is the pleasure in terms of a romance uh, in your life? And so those are might be some themes that might pop up for you as well. And then if there's any themes around fertility, uh, sometimes it could be like, if you are trying to have a kid, um, maybe paying attention under like when, which planets are transiting through and what are the themes of those planets and like, are they in retrograde? Like, again, I said earlier, full moon letting go. So maybe not focusing of a full moon transiting through your fifth house of pleasure, maybe trying to focus it more when you are going towards like the new moon, obviously, like, and when you are fertile as well. But those are kind of like some things to like kind of think about, like to kind of be like, oh, you know, like what's happening in my birth chart around that fifth house if I am trying to, you know, bring a kid into this world or any of that. Then we're going to tap into the sixth house. Sixth house is ruled by Virgo. And so... Uh, Virgo and so this house is all about health fitness but like health routines habits um, around your health and it is also the house that um, is on the flip side has to do with debt as well so anytime there is like 
any retrograde maybe like I know for me Mercury was retrograding in Virgo back in September of this year and it really had me look at my debt and like and deal with it and it put me in this situation that I had no choice that I couldn't run away from like I was constantly getting calls from a credit card company and I finally decided you know what it's time for a resolution and I went and I found a resolution for myself that worked the best for me and my credit card and all the other debt that I owed and so it ended up working out. And although it was going through Mercury retrograde and it was just like a little bit like nerve wracking, a little bit like, oh my God, what's going to happen? It pushed me to deal with it. And it wasn't so scary. So again, like re retrogrades are not meant for things to be scary. Full moons are not meant for things to be scary. It's just that sometimes, yes, there's certain things that happen in the external that were like, oh my God, that was that was chaotic. That was a lot. That was emotionally draining. And then there's other times where it's going to be like just that like push you needed to get something done or it's going to be a positive thing. And I found that for me, that was a push that I needed, but it also created a positive thing as now I have a better relationship with my dad and it doesn't cause me the anxiety it did then. So these are like a few examples of like how it like looks so now we're halfway through we're going to the second half uh we got the seven house seven houses ruled by libra so this has everything to do about partnerships but all like romantic partnerships business partnerships it also has to do with contracts and marriages so those are kind of some of the themes that you will find in your seventh house and this is where you can get curious of you know, looking at, you know, if you want to learn more about your birth chart, you can look at themes of what planets are there. So like, let's say Pluto is in your birth chart in the seventh house, Pluto is ruled by Scorpio, that's death and rebirth. So you might find that when it comes to relationships or contracts or business partners, it, it is very like, kind of like, happens you know you more than one like you you find you you date and then it ends and you've learned something from it and then you like become somebody new because of it and that death and rebirth cycle of Pluto and so that can be a way of how it shows up for you whether and if it's not in romantic partnerships it could be in contracts or business partnerships as well so think of it it's just like each house it's not necessarily like this is all it is like there's just so many ways and so many directions it can go after this we're going to go into the eighth house so as we spoke about pluto eight house is ruled by scorpio so this house is all about death and rebirth this is a house that you know it is like letting go of like the old and bringing in the new like the rising phoenix but it also has to do with sex uh it also has to do with like joint ventures and taxes and death in itself uh also uh joint like property ventures and loans all those kind of things so <laughs> I think it was like if you ever heard of the quote sex death and taxes like that is like that's eight house eight house that's Scorpio that's Pluto that's that's basically like all that is and so anything that is transiting through this in retrograde, there's, you know, sometimes it is like something that you need to like that ends and that you need to let go so that you can learn something about yourself. But then maybe other times it maybe has to challenges you about your sex life and like how you are and how comfortable are you like it maybe there might be something there for you to dive deeper in to get to know more about yourself. So there is a lot of like different themes of how to go about it. Then after that, we go into the ninth house of Sagittarius. So Sagittarius, so this is a little bit like more of a lighter energy after the eighth house of Scorpio. Uh, ninth house is all about like travel, travel, leisure, uh, education, philosophy, religion, the law. So this is where you can find sometimes certain themes like if there is like a new moon so new moon is all about new beginnings 
And if it is transiting over your ninth house, maybe th that day of the new moon, you just happen to book a trip or you register for a course to learn something new. So that is like how that can like show up or maybe sometimes you're traveling during like certain transits uh, or you're taking certain courses, certain like when there's certain retrogrades for you to learn more. So it is really interesting of how that can show up as well. Then after that, we go to the 10th house. So the 10th house is ruled by Capricorn. So this is all about career, a career, your public image, long-term goals, uh, your expertise. Um, this one also has to do with like men, fathers, and fame. So this one's interesting, like, especially with like, you know, career and public image. And, you know, to kind of give you an example, Pluto uh, was retrograding um, through Capricorn. Well, it wasn't Capricorn for a really long time. Now it has moved to Aquarius. And in my transit, like my birth chart, the Pluto was retrograding in my 10th house. And so uh, Pluto stays in a sign for a really long time and so basically like the past like I would say at least 10 years that Pluto was in that there was a lot of changes in my career a lot of trying to figure out what I want to do how do I do it and even as I more niched into what I'm doing now building my own business and everything like there was still a lot of trial and error like in the past few years of trying to figure out what works what doesn't work and so that is how that can show up. And especially because I had a lot of jobs in the past like 10 years. So again, that death and rebirth kind of way of things. So, you know, this is a way for you to think of like what, you know, when you think of like Pluto was transiting in Capricorn, you can look at what house was it in before it went into Aquarius, it could see like, well, what themes happened in the past like 10 or so years that it was transiting through that? And where did you do a lot of death and rebirth? And now it has moved to Aquarius. So it's a different kind of theme. And so now we're going to go into our 11th house. Our 11th house is ruled by Aquarius. So this house is all about friends, a group, social awareness, humanitarianism, uh, also the hopes, the wishes, the future. So those are the kind of themes um, that you will find in the 11th house of Aquarius. And so it could be like, sometimes there's going to be like, if it's in a retrograde, it could be changes in groups of friends. Like if there's a full moon, it's like letting go of like certain groups, you know, or a new moon, you meet new people. Like there's just different ways that this can show up for you. And then finally, the last house is the 12th house, which is ruled by Pisces. And as I'm recording this, we are in Pisces season. So Pisces is all about closures, endings. It's the last zodiac. And so this is all about like closing cycles and endings. Uh, it is also the dream world, the subconscious, limiting beliefs. Also spirituality, karma, and afterlife. So if having a, you know, like, for example, I think in a, like when I'm recording this, obviously when it's going to go out, but like when I'm recording this, we're coming into a new moon of Pisces. And so that will be like maybe some limiting beliefs popping up, like and maybe something like new from like for us to learn around that. Now, depending on where it is transiting in in someone's chart. If it is transiting over the 12th house, and that would be a double whammy, right? Because it's like Pisces season, new moon in Pisces, and then 12th house. So there might be a lot of like themes coming up of like unknown things that you didn't know that now you know, and um, you know, truth being revealed, the things popping up out of the woodworks, and you're like, oh my God, okay, now I got all the pieces of the puzzle and I know where to go next. So those are kind of certain themes that you can tap into. Uh, and then also like spirituality, like if you feel like you are in a place of like learning and diving deeper into spirituality, then that's when you can find that. 
So those are the 12 houses. I hope this was very informative for you. If you really enjoyed this episode, please like, share, comment, uh, subscribe. I appreciate it all. And uh, yeah, you can find me at juliesunknown.com. Also on Instagram, juliesunknown. And that's basically it. So thank you so much for listening. And I will speak to you all soon. Bye.